This is the IT15. So this thing has one of the top mobile chips out there right now. I've no doubt that it'll pass my developer related tests with flying colors. I'll even throw 96 gigabytes of memory in there to do LLM tests, but will it survive the brutal test and still be able to run LLMs? That's what we're going to find out today. This thing's actually really solid. 2.5 gig ethernet, HDMI, display port, USB-A, USB-C with 40 gigs, and another HDMI port. SD card on this side, two more USB-As, headphone jack, and a power button. And then this fancy thing that I don't know anybody that uses it. This backplate is solid metal. So this thing comes with 32 gigs of DDR5 and a two terabyte NVMe, Kingston NVMe. You have space for another little NVMe here. I got my own upgrade. This is 96 gigabytes. I wonder if we can power it off of a portable power supply. It even says that right here that you can power this off of a USB. What? It's on. It lives. <laughs> it is, it's still on. The mini PC is just running off of a battery. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I've never seen that. Folks, I think we've reached true portability with mini PCs now. And this is the latest mobile chip by Intel, Core Ultra 9 285H. Now I kinda wanna start with a baseline for this processor because I haven't tested this out yet. This has 16 cores. It's a beast of a little processor. So let's kick things off with Geekbench to get a single core score and a multi-core score. This will give us an idea of how it's going to do in JavaScript applications, for example, for single core, and then actual compiled and interpreted code for the multi-core score. We'll do those tests too, but getting the scores will just set a baseline and allow us to compare it to some other machines. I recently did a test on a bunch of mini PCs, including the M4 and the M4 Pro Mac minis, and a bunch of other mini PCs in the $500 range and then the $1,000 range. Let's see where this one fits in because this one is around the $1,000 range. Pretty decent scores here for Geekbench. This actually beats out the Snapdragon X Elite machines. Nice job, Intel. You're down, but you're still alive. Your time will come again. Here's Speedometer 3, and this is a test of JavaScript performance in the browser. This also is indicative of how your development experience is going to go if you do JavaScript-based applications. This is going really <laughs> freaking fast. 38, that's pretty good score. For comparison, the Apple M4 Pro gets 47 to 48, and the B-Link Sir 9, a computer which I really enjoy, I've been using it as my media server, gets a score of 32. I'm gonna grab this web tooling benchmark, which is available on GitHub under the V8 organization. It's an oldie, but a goodie. And let's run that. For those of you that have been doing web development for a little while, you might remember some of these names like Babel, uh, Minify, Babylon, Bubble, Chai. Any of those things ring a bell? JavaScript moves fast. <laughs> these are only a couple years old. CoffeeScript is not around anymore. Anyway, these are the scores. Acorn, 24, Babel, 27. And the one that I'm waiting for is, well, there's Prettier, 23, and TypeScript, 34.76 run per second with a geometric mean of 27. This is really not too far behind Apple's M4 Pro, which is at 33. Last night, I threw a task at an LLM, crushed the async logic, but still couldn't center a div. Seriously? That's why even after decades of coding, I never stopped leveling up. Tech sprints forward and you can't outsource the basics. Enter boot.dev, today's sponsor and hands down the most fun way I've found to master backend web dev. Quests, XP, leaderboards, even an AI wizard bear named Boots guiding you so you can actually finish courses. Python, Go, JavaScript projects galore. I'm midway through the cryptography path and I've been slaying the coding challenges literally or maybe figuratively, I'm not sure. And that's way more engaging than binge watching lecture videos. Expect a lively discord, step-by-step -step solutions when you're stuck, and curriculum that maps straight to job ready stacks. I once spent half a semester of college coding on paper. Boot.dev gets you building real APIs before your coffee even cools down. You can browse every lesson for free. A membership unlocks the interactive coding arenas, AI hints, progress tracking, and game mechanics. Ready to level up? Hit boot.dev with a link below. Use my code and snag 25% off your first payment. I'll see you on the leaderboard. Now that we've seen some numbers, I think it's time. I hate to do this. I hate to do this to a brand new machine, but we have to. Let's go. <laughs> it 
getting started. Let's do the Mandelbrot test, which is something I often do on this channel. It's an interpreted Python test. And this test uses all the cores that are available and just maxes out the system. We should hear the fans spin up quite a bit here. I activate the Conda environment, which is how I like to run my Python projects. Oh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Conda is a way to isolate your Python versions and dependencies so that you can keep your projects separate and not interfere with each other. I'm gonna do measure command. It's measure command in PowerShell, not easy. Instead of just being time, like you can do on a Mac or a Linux. All right, 16,000 is the parameter. That's the typical parameter I use with this test. And that's what's suggested on the Metalbrot algorithm page on Benchmark Games, which is a site you can check out and run this for yourself if you want. Yep. Hearing those fans, there's that CPU going crazy. 39 seconds, that's um, not terrible. Considering this machine has 16 cores, it's pretty far off from what Apple's M4 Pro can do. Now, when I run this test multiple times in a row, we might see some thermal throttling happening with the CPU. If it gets too warm, it's gonna start slowing down. That's what throttling is. Even though this box feels cool to the touch, I don't see how this could possibly thermal throttle. It feels really cool and it's a small box, so I don't foresee this happening, but let's check. Yeah, 39, pretty consistent. It's even a little bit faster, so no throttling on this box, at least for the test that I did. But we can turn it up a notch. One of my tests is a large .NET compilation. I even called it large project appropriately. And this uses the .NET CLI. At first I generate 100,000 namespaces and classes that are all unique, forcing the compiler to actually compile all these and then run it. All right, let's run it. Look at our busy, busy CPU here. Now the time to beat here, the fastest time was the M4 Pro at 84 seconds for the build time. M4 got 94 seconds. The rest of the machines were quite a bit slower. The GMK Tech K8 Plus, 154 seconds. B-Link Sear 8, 161 seconds. And the X Elite machine did pretty well, 120 seconds there. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow, we did it. <laughs> Build succeeded at 109 seconds. That is so close to the uh, M4 Pro, which is the fastest one. This is now the runner up. This is the second machine, well, the third fastest, M4 Pro, M4, and then this one. And we're not even getting hot. That's the amazing part. All right, now time for the next brutal test. Let's take this out again. we're back still kicking now i'm going to change gears a little bit and do some machine learning tests we're going to start with a little bit of training i did some training in that video with the mini pcs so i might as well do that same test here and it is a pytorch example of doing some resnet 50 with a cifar 10 data set we just want to get some timing here compared to the other ones i'm not going to do the full set i'm just going to do the subset here so it doesn't take forever to do and let's go. Now I wanna keep an eye on the task manager here and I wanna see where this is happening. And the reason I wanna do that is because a GPU that actually has a lot capability. This is the Intel Arc 140T. It's an integrated GPU with 16 gigabytes. It says 16 gigabytes of VRAM here. It says 18 over here. Now I did have the 96 gigabyte kit in here and it had up to 50 something gigabytes in there for the GPU. So it's sharing that memory quite nicely. You'll see that the GPU is active here, but I believe that this particular training is mostly happening on the CPU because we're not loading Vulkan, which is a cross-platform library that allows you to do machine learning. But you'll see here that we have a little bump in the memory under the CPU, and we're seeing the training happening mostly on the CPU right here. On Apple, this runs on the GPU, so we have a significant improvement we have pretty short times on the M4 Pro and the M4, and then a significant increase in the time this runs on the other machines. 184 seconds. That is pretty high. We had 28 seconds for the M4 Pro. The B-Link Sir 9 had 111 seconds. So this is quite a bit slower. 
Now, one of the mini PCs that I tested, which was the GMK Tech K8 Plus, had an Oculink port on it. And that allows you to connect an actual discrete GPU to the machine and use that GPU for the training. And we get very different results in that case. So hopefully Geekom takes that into consideration. If they do see this video, make one of these with the Oculink port. Thank you. Now let's take a look at some inference, which is to say we're gonna be generating some text with LM Studio. Now it's interesting that even this general Gemma 3 27 billion parameter model, this suggests a GPU offload of 44 layers out of the 62 that are available. I'm gonna crank it up all the way and see if it loads the model, why not? We do have 16 gigabytes available for the VRAM for the GPU, so it should fit in there, maybe? Might as well try it out. Let's keep an eye on the task manager to see what's happening with that GPU. Yep, right now, oh. <sighs> does not like that failed to load the model we'll come back to that let's try gemma 3 4 billion as you can see gpu offload 34 out of 34 is possible that's not a problem at all because the model is only about four gigabytes in size so first it gets loaded into system memory and then it should be available to the gpu memory not 100 percent sure how that works with this intel chip but that's how it works with discrete gpus and that's how it works with that amd ryzen ai 9 395 max plus Hello. Hello there. It's going pretty fast. That is nice. 23 tokens per second. Now, of course, if you've seen videos here on this channel and you've seen some of my other tests, you know, like discrete GPUs, we're in the 200s over here compared to this, but 20 is actually pretty usable. I think smaller models are getting to that point where the quality is going to be good, especially with the FP series, the floating point series of models that are going to be quantized to uh, FP8 and fp4 that's not going to be available for this system but that is going to be available on the nvidia machines stay tuned for those videos your mind is going to be blown on those but here we're quantizing down to four bits in integers not floating points so the quality loss is still there but it's getting a little bit better and uh, depends on how you quantize too for example bartowski a famous quantizer on hugging face uses something called i matrix to really bring up that quality of the quants and the lm studio community models are often contributed by bartowski so this is one of those now i won't be testing the quality of the output here I'm just testing the speed here i do those tests elsewhere so definitely check out the channel for those videos let's check out this uh, gemma 3 12 billion parameter model this is a q4 km quant and this is a 8 gigabyte model but LM Studio says 48 out of 48 is possible, so let's do it. Here's the GPU memory. You can see it being loaded up. It is a larger model, so there is that memory growth. Start a new chat and say hello. This is going to be a bit slower, but that was actually not bad. Eight tokens per second. That's you know on a little portable little PC running on the iGPU here. So for that, <laughs> I'd say this is pretty good write a story let's just get a wall of text going on to see how fast it's going and you can tell me if you can keep up with reading that these kinds of models are good for not generating code but for chatting with your llm to maybe get some ideas planning some project architecture doing some writing things like that i'm gonna stop it and we're getting 8.19 tokens per second which is pretty decent now how do we load that big model that 27 billion parameter model well LM Studio does allow us to loosen up some loading requirements. So let's go down here. By the way, notice that we are on Intel Arc, but we are using Vulkan here. Vulkan is that library I was talking about that allows it to run on the GPU quickly, which is pretty nice. Here's the memory guardrail and it's set to strict right now. We're going to loosen this up to relaxed and see if uh, we're able to run that 27 billion parameter model. Let's load that up and we're going to offload everything to the GPU. It's probably not gonna be too happy. There's that memory going up. Come on. You're so close, you're so close. Oh no! Fail to initialize the context. I tell you what, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put that 96 back in here. This is something you cannot do with an Apple product. In fact, you can't even do this with the new AMD chips. Come on. Aha, uh -huh. 54 gigabytes of shared GPU memory. Total 96. This is not gonna be a problem anymore. Start a new chat, load up that 27 billion parameter model, and 62 out of 62 are automatically going to the GPU. 
No complaints. This is not gonna be fast, okay? The point is, it's running, and it's running on the GPU using Vulkan, and what other machine is gonna get you that? Look, it's kind of acceptable for a chat. Pretty elaborate answer for a hi. I do have very little patience for this kind of thing nowadays, so I'm gonna stop it right there. 4.39 tokens per second. I do like a little bit faster than that, quite a bit faster than that, but the fact that it's running a 27 billion parameter model, loading up 18 gigabytes into memory, into GPU memory nonetheless. All right, we'll do another one. Let's go. Well, it's not in the best of shapes. It's pretty burnt and beat up and even a little bent from the car. In fact, I couldn't open it because this screw wouldn't come off. So I kind of bent the bottom part, but it turns on. Holy cow. <laughs> wow, this thing still works and it works well. Gemma 3, 1 billion parameters, 41 tokens per second. I'd say this is probably the toughest little son of a computer I've ever had. Make sure you watch that other video with the mini PCs. There's a bunch of them to choose from over there. That's gonna be right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.